Hey, Coach. Um, I want to ask you, on Monday you mentioned um, this, the, the new recruiting rule where in the past you guys could go out Sunday right after the last game, and now it's been pushed back, I believe, to Friday of that week. Kind of a two-part question. First off, your thoughts on that rule and you know whether you like it or not. And secondly, how does that kind of alter your strategy for the month of December since obviously it's an important month. you got a few weeks to kind of maybe not finish off your class but get the majority of your class kind of on board. Yeah, I'm kind of torn. You know, there, there's parts of it. You know, I love the fact that we get a chance to be with our own guys right away, <clears throat> spend some time with them. Uh, but I, I, I don't like the fact that we can't get out and go recruit. Uh, there's just such a small window of time, you know, before December signing, you know, it takes a whole week away from you. Uh, so that's tough, you know. So, um, you know, it's one of those things where there's, there's benefits and, and, and negatives to it. So, and, and the plan is really to maximize time with our guys and, and being able to, to go uh, meet with some players and their families as well, uh, whether it's here or whether it's at their place. But uh, uh, didn't, you know, we always had to kind of, you know, do that within being on the road recruiting. So uh, it definitely makes you have a change in your plans because what happens is you have to decide, okay, when a guy that's going to be signing in December, you know, you only get, I personally get one visit. It to, to them during this contact period. So that's from now until even the second signing. So uh, we got to decide when we use that one. So and each coach can have one per week uh, during the contact period with each recruit. So uh, that just creates a lot of, um, you know, it's compressed time now. You got one less week to do it. And so it's really more of a, it's going to be a really intense dash to signing day. So definitely makes it a little more challenging, but once the rules are made, you adapt to them and, and find the best way to maximize your time. Jacqueline Wilson. Hey Tom, um, with Taiwan and Travel Mullen, just how have you seen the two of them interact with each other throughout the season, um, just as brothers? And I guess specifically with Travel, how have you seen him grow and where do you want to see him improve just now that he's been here for almost the full season? Yeah, I, I would say first of all, you know, they're, they're entertaining. You know, they, they sit beside each other uh, in meetings, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, Taiwan definitely looks out for Travel, there's no doubt about it. Uh, he's, he's tough on him. He's a typical big brother. You know, I got a big brother, too. I actually played with my big brother in college. So, uh, you know, you kind of have that special bond. You can get at each other in ways that others can't, you know. So, but And they do that. But uh, they, uh, I think there's no question that Travel um, is, uh, um, feels, you know, pressured by Taiwan in a good way, you know, to do the little things the right way. And, and whether it's, you know, focus and attention and during meetings and practice and all different things. So, and I just want to see him keep growing and developing. You know, Ty Taiwan came in here and played more as a true freshman. And uh, Travell is going to have to have a chance to really be developed here. This offseason is going to be big for him, you know, to be able to physically get bigger. You know, he's, he's, he's not a very heavy guy. He's got, he's taller than Taiwan, but needs to get thicker and stronger. That way it's going to be huge for him. So just want to see him continue to grow and develop and, and right now he's been on our scout team and working with those guys but uh, definitely has uh, a talent that we need to be able to keep developing and so I'm anxious to see him have a great offseason. Wilson and Zach. Tom, uh, going into this last game obviously you want to get a win but are there any specific areas in particular you want to see improvement have you feeling better going into the offseason? Well I mean you know um, the, the win. I mean, that, that, that's the focus, you know, and, and that, that makes everything feel different in the offseason. But, uh, uh, yeah, you want to see your team progress. You want to see your guys uh, that you got coming back, uh, you know, finish on a strong note and, and see kind of where they've, you know, gotten to. And now that you got a, a launching pad to, to take them to another level in the offseason. So, you know, you definitely want to see your, your big men up front uh, finish strong. We've got a lot of young guys who've been playing offensively up front and then even on the D-line, just getting those guys to be able to finish well and finish strong. You know, and then just the, the young guys that are playing, all the guys that are coming back, you want to see them have, you know, um, you know, a, a confidence to them entering the offseason to be able to create uh, the momentum you need to be able to keep your program moving where you want it to be. So, yeah, it's a lot of different things without question, but, man, the, the bottom line goal is to win this game. All right, Zach and Tom. Tom, I, I don't know if there's necessarily a scheme to this. The, the turnovers have slowed down a little bit for you guys, but you had a couple last week. Um, Purdue is one of the most turnover prone teams in the conference. I recognize it's something you always emphasize, but are there things you can see in an opponent that, that has more turnovers than the average, essentially, that you can sort of point to with your players and say, 
we can hurt them there even more so than just what we're trying to do every week? There's no question. You know, when you have a team that has a situation like that, that's put that on film, you know, we, we make cut-ups of those things and we show them how within our system and what we're going to try to do to them to be able to create those as well and just show them this is, if we do this, this is what you're going to get. So, yeah, you, you definitely have a specific approach to that per whatever, uh, you know, the area is for that, that particular team. And you want to make sure your guys are uh, aware of that, that area that they've not been as good in as they need to be and you want to expose it and they're trying to do the same with, with us you know and so those are big deals you know the, the turnover ratio the turnover margin that we call it between your your team protecting the ball and your team creating them is massive in the outcomes of games and especially in in rivalry games and so to me it's going to be a point of emphasis as you know it always is for us we did it again today in practice uh, but we've had a heightened sense of emphasis on it during our team periods you know so but uh, bottom line is is that we got to protect the football and offense and create takeaways on defense in order to win. All right, Tyler. Hey, Coach, I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, I don't think this was asked specifically on Monday, but I just kind of wanted to clear it up. Is Dexter Williams going to be the, uh, the starting quarterback on Saturday for Indiana? Yes. Yes, he will be. All right. Thanks, Tom. Awesome. Have a great day, Elio.